All right, everyone, now we have a case of more legal tyranny, this time from the Turks and Caicos Islands, actually. Uh, they're administered by the so-called Great Britain, uh, more like Brit Bongistan at this point. Link in the description archived, of course, uh, Ryan Watson went to the Turks and Caicos, and this is a really weird case with his wife, again, so forth. And uh, he, uh, he got arrested trying to leave the country because he had four rounds of ammunition that he forgot uh, was in his luggage. And so that was a big problem for them. And unfortunately, they now have mandatory minimum sentencing uh, before, uh, literally a couple of months ago, before then, if an American tourist had a gun or something like that, they, they would pay a big fine. Um, there wasn't necessarily prison time administered. If it was, then, you know, you serve a few months. And there was, a, there, again, link in the description, there was another individual who uh, got detained there, a man from Pennsylvania, and he spent six months uh, in a jail. He's like, well, there was like, you know, you know, no clean water, and you're exposed to the elements all the time, and it was misery, basically. You know, <laughs> the food was retarded, and, uh, you know, the abusive jail staff and all of these other things, which I can imagine. I mean, it's British administered, not necessarily known for having the best conditions in their jails, even worse than some U.S. jails, probably. That's going some. Almost third world. And it's a tropical uh, island destination, so, you know, it's 85 degrees of full humidity most of the time. Not necessarily the place that you would want to uh, be in, in prison. Um, you know, like, imagine you look out your cell window, you're looking at all the tourists and shit like that over frolicking on the beach, and you're sitting there sweltering without an AC. Um, this is a dumb case, though, because now they have a mandatory minimum sentencing guideline that could get them up to 12 years in prison for having four bullets. Now, there were several points of failure here. When he left the United States, he was not supposed to have bullets in his luggage to begin with. I believe this was a carry-on item specifically. So there was a failure by the United States. Uh, improperly stored ammunition just ran, even if it was check-on luggage. They should have seen that there were bullets in the goddamn luggage. So they owe him an apology, the TSA specifically. He goes there, he spends his time there, he's literally leaving the island, so he's clearly not a threat to anyone on the island, he just happens to have ammunition in his luggage that the TSA apparently failed to notice, or at least alert him, hey, you're not allowed to, you know, even if it was on check-on, they would just fucking confiscate the ammo. What the fuck is the problem? Just take it and then send the bag on its way. Do a U.S. citizen a fucking solid, you know, that's what you're paid for by taxpayer money now, isn't it? He's literally leaving. He doesn't have a firearm. Quite clearly, this ammo was accidentally left in the luggage. Quite clearly, there's an example. They let his wife go. Uh, she's allowed to return back to uh, uh, be with, with, with the kids, but he gets detained um, for literally no reason. He did nothing violent. He broke no actual law, I mean, because British law is bullshit anyway and shouldn't apply to anyone, including British citizens at this point. Um, it's persecution. It's basically, I mean, the British government should issue a pardon or something like that and say, well, you know, come on. <laughs> he didn't shoot anyone. He wasn't trying to shoot anyone. He was literally about to leave. That shows that there was no malevolence in his actions. Why, why, I mean, if he intended to do something violent, wouldn't he have done that while he was actually there? It wouldn't even make any sense. Apparently, there's a GoFundMe, by the way for uh, Ryan Watson, so hashtag free Ryan Watson. Uh, you can look that up and potentially donate to their legal defense fund. But they got the mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines in the Turks and Caicos with regards to bringing in ammunition. And so it's, I mean, he might end up spending years in prison away from his family um, for, a, for a mistake that literally anyone could make. I mean, I would never have stray ammunition in my luggage. Uh, I, I always double-check my bags, every compartment of every bag, uh, before I go anywhere. Funny story, when I came back uh, to the United States and the Netherlands this most recent time, I uh, actually transited a sword in, into the United States. I have a Napoleonic Sabre, which uh, you, some of you have seen. That was the one that the uh, cat accidentally dragged off of the table trying to flummox up onto the table and she didn't quite make it and the sword fell down and one time I knocked it off of its hanger that was on the wall because I was displaying it behind me. I should probably have cross swords behind me too. Thinking about that, I do have a number of sabers and cutlasses, so that would be pretty cool. I should show off my collection. You know, I'm that weird kid that likes knives a little bit too much, I suppose. But I transited it back. It was in the check-on luggage. 
And when you come back at the Detroit airport, you know, you have to take your luggage and then transfer it to, uh, you, you know, to the next plane, uh, get to your destination. And they had me do it manually somehow. And I was thinking to myself, like, you know, I know that I'm not a flight risk or anything like that. Like, I'm not going to do anything crazy. But if somebody was psycho or something like that, you know, you can have guns in the checked luggage. Couldn't a person, in theory, go into the bathroom, load their weapon, and go on a shooting spree? I, don't know, I think that they need a better... I, I, really, I think that they should automatically transfer the luggage. I'm just saying that could pose a security risk at some point. Like, I may not go crazy, but there are nuts out there. We've seen them, um, unfortunately. Uh, and I was surprised. I was like, yeah, I'm talking to the security person. I'm like, you know, I do have a sword on here, and what am I supposed to do? Because I don't think I can have a sword in the airport. He's like, oh, just don't whip it out, basically. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. By the way, this time when I returned to the United States, normally they have a group of people that, like, question you, like, you know, where are you going? You know, what do you do for a living? Just making small talk is it as an extra security precaution because if a person is sweating bullets, like, ah, uh, like, then maybe they, they get questioned a little bit further. They didn't do that this time. You went through an extra layer of security, and that's basically all. In theory, you could have uh, taken it through the security line, I guess. I, I don't know. But um, airport security story aside, because it was a little bit loopy. I I'm just saying the Detroit airport is really well put together and really efficient, but I don't know. The security there is a little bit odd. I I'm just saying. Uh, much better in Dulles, actually. Uh, extremely efficient. Very, very fast. The Turks in Caicos should back down on this. It's a U.S. citizen. We're allowed to, yeah, we're allowed to defend ourselves in this country. A couple of bullets in the absence of a gun is not going to kill anyone. The man clearly didn't have any malevolent intent because he was literally leaving the country at the time. Chalk it up to a diplomatic uh, kerfuffle with the U.S. government in its administration of airport security. Because, he, he, I mean, it should have been noticed when he left the goddamn country. If anything, why don't you find the U.S. government and say, Well, the U.S. government accidentally allowed four bullets into our country and into Brit Bangistan's uh, territory here. Uh, and we're, we're, you're going to have to pay 10,000, uh, you know, uh, uh, pounds per bullet or something like that. You know, we'll, we'll get a give, send, go going. Don't worry, we'll, we'll recoup the cost. The fact that he's being detained right now in a tropical island, it's like a, the vacation from hell sort of thing. This is why I don't like traveling, by the way, and I tend to be paranoid when I do. I'm like, I, I vigorously checked before I went to the Netherlands. What am I allowed to bring? What am I not allowed to bring? When I came back to the United States, I'm like, okay, these are the things that are allowed through customs. Apparently, transiting a firearm through an airport is perfectly fine as long as you don't take it out of the luggage in between transfers. I was not aware of this fact. It's very strange to me. Fuck, I mean, uh, would they even check it if I did land in the Netherlands? Are they even going to notice that I've got an illegal weapon in the fucking country? I don't know. Last time I went out, a couple of Februarys ago, they didn't even have me take my goddamn shoes off. They barely checked the luggage that was in the in the COVID times. Um, I mean, it's all sorts of screwy. They should not be detaining him. It was clearly a mistake. You have these mandatory minimum guidelines here, but there was no malevolence. No violence occurred. It's four fucking bullets, dude, and you're looking at 12 years in prison? No, you should give him 12 days in prison and then let him go, okay? Well, we'll make a compromise. You can give him a slap on the wrist punishment or something like that. Apparently, this needs to be addressed through diplomacy. But because the Biden administration is anti-gun anyway, don't expect them to lift a goddamn legal finger. Supposedly, the consular affairs that are there are willing to help uh, U.S. citizens. Bullshit. They probably won't help him at all. They'll throw him under the bus and nobody will ever fucking hear from him again. He might die in prison uh, on a tropical island. It's like you were sent to Devil's Island. It's like Papillon or something like that. It makes absolutely no sense to me. That's about all. Peace out.